Welcome back to the Boss Up Like a Queen Summit. Today, we have an amazing queen bossing up your social, Emma Tesler, fellow diva, social media maven, uh, and host of the podcast, Stop Scrolling, Start Scaling. Okay, what a brilliant name. We're going to talk all about that too, because it's such a cool and, and engaging name. But anyway, Emma, welcome to the show today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and chat about all things bossing up and glowing up and being like the best version of yourself. Oh my God, because you are the epitome. Okay. <laughs> so yes, we want to hear about, so um, Emma has her own social media agency or digital marketing agency. I don't want to limit it just to social media, but digital marketing fabulousness. Um. And I mean, what, so, so starting out, you know, starting out in the world, whatever, how did that become a dream? How did you, what drove you to be this badass version of yourself? We were just going to be like, yeah, I'm doing this 95 media. That's the name of our company. Yeah. It was really not the plan to be honest with you. That wasn't, <laughs> yeah. we didn't go into this world thinking this was going to happen. I actually had a totally different career before I founded 95 media and I was working in interior design and I was so passionate about design. It was, you know, I think anything that we do, we have to be passionate about to keep the wheels moving and just stay excited. And over a few years, I just found myself less excited about design and much more passionate and excited about marketing. And the thing I love about social media marketing and just all of the avenues of of marketing that we do for our clients in the digital space is that it's really so fast paced. And I am a very fast paced person and <laughs> like to have things changing all the time. And that is really like the beauty of marketing to me. And it's really ironic because that is what drives a lot of people away from marketing because that also can feel really intimidating. But I really, I created 95 Media because of that reason. You know, we work with a lot of founders who are really scared to dive in, or maybe they've tried it and they aren't seeing the results. And so then we're able to come in and really serve them and allow them to see even better results than they thought they could um, just through, you know, like the services that we offer, which is so rewarding for us. Uh, yeah, I would say that as an owner, as a business owner, it's just so, super hard to try to manage everything and be really good at everything. So to be able to let go of those reins and, you know, um, hire someone like yourself, but that's not always easy either because of budgets and whatnot. So what you have done is create, you know, an unbelievable value proposition for people. Yeah. And Emma just shared with me today that they just hired another person. This is amazing. Like a growing business. Thank you. And how many people is it now, Emma? We have seven women on our team. Seven women. Yes. I love that. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if that was intentional, but for me, that is like major. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very intentional. Like that's part of my mission with growing the brand as well is being able to financially support more women and compensate them really well for what they're great at. And we work with a lot of female founders. So we kind of serve on both ends. You know, we're able to support our team and pay them well. And then we're also able to support our female founders that we work with and serve them well. And so it just really all comes together as part of the mission for 95 Media. Okay. That, the, that's music to my ears. Okay. So I teach, um, as you know, I, I teach at Savannah College of Art and Design and I teach business and social and, and we talk a lot. I took a lot in my classes about mission, mission and vision. And, you know, I think it's hard sometimes for younger, younger people to understand the importance of that because, you know, they're not in it, right. They're just, they're in the academic thing and even if they're working for a company, sometimes it's hard to understand like the, the, the bigger picture. So, and, and I teach a lot about that saying how important it is for a company to have that as a foundation and the core values and whatnot. So can, let, can we talk a little bit about that? Like, how did you, uh, you know, discover your mission? How did you think about it when you were planning 95 Media? 
Well, it's changed a lot over the years. And I think that's totally normal is that like you start with one and it evolves and kind of shape shifts into as you grow as a human and as the business grows as an entity, like those things are going to change. I, re- I read a book last year that I would highly recommend. It's called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Oh, and- yes. Love that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's so, so great. And I read it last year at a point where a lot was shifting in our business. And it was such a great reminder, really relevant to this conversation, that everything you do should always go back to the company's why. That should be the driving factor. And that should be the point of decision for a lot of those big shifts that happen in the business. Okay. So we want to implement this new software. Well, does it align with our, why is this aligned with the the vision that we have for the brand? Um, and that really helped me kind of like reorient last year and come back to like, what is it that we're actually working towards? But when I started 95 media, I started it in my dorm room in 2015. Like I did not know what I was doing. I was just kind of like, Oh, I can make money on the side and do this. Like, that's cool. But then, you know, as we really grew and we had more clients and I started, I I mean, I made my first hire when I was 21 years old. Like I had no business like being a boss of any kind, but you like learn it along the way. And part of the mission has always been supporting other women, um, like putting more money in the hands of women. And so, like I said, we are able to do that on both ends, but really at its core, 95 media is here to serve brands that need to grow and they want to grow and they don't really know how, because what put me on this path and what ultimately was the deciding factor between, do I stay in interior design, which I literally had a degree in, or do I go into digital marketing, which I did not have a degree in, I had no credible background in, except just hitting the ground running and doing the thing and learning along the way. And what ultimately drove me to picking marketing and not only picking marketing, but creating a company around digital marketing was knowing that the future of digital marketing and essentially social media marketing was going to allow, it was going to be the tool that would allow me and the business to help more people. And so through that drive to just help and to support and to, you know, help others kind of like lift everyone up, that was really like the driving factor. I love that she's singing my song and she's singing my (laughs) song about, you know, you leveraging the sisterhood to really help yourself be lift up or level up or boss up or you know get better and then as, as you're serving others it's like a whole thing it's like a circle yeah um and and also this this is this is th- what you're saying is is actually so close to my heart because i see and i teach uh like i was saying i social media and students and so many of them have the side hustle where they're doing social media for people and it's such a needed thing um and they did, and they're doing the same thing, you know, that you did, right? They're doing it out of their dorm room. They're they're going to be success. They're successful already because they're making ink, you know, they're making revenue. And then what's next? So I feel like your story is so inspirational and so motivational for so many of these students that are, you know, these social students that are, are they're doing the same kind of thing. It's such a need. It's such a need in the marketplace. Yeah. And it's such a growing space as well. I really think there's room for everyone and you can find your nook and cranny and like your expertise. And maybe you really love TikTok, but you don't want to work on Instagram. And so being able to really find what you're great at or build a team that, you know, everyone can have their expertise. Our team today is a million times more talented than I am at what they do. And I love that. But, you know, that's a really scary shift to make as well as when you start to grow, if, if that's what you want to do is to build a team, it's really scary to outsource those things and put your trust in other people. And we guide our clients through that. Like you were saying in the beginning, you know, you kind of, you outsource the things that you're not great at when you build a brand, it's really scary to outsource and it's scary to also trust other people to support your own mission. So there's a lot of, you know, hurdles to climb over, but you know, if you have that passion to grow something on the side and see, well, maybe it could be my full time, or maybe I can turn this into something bigger than just me. It's absolutely worth looking into. I mean, we were talking about that earlier on another, um, actually in one of, in my coaching session, 
And they were talking about Richard Branson dropping out of high school, Steve Jobs dropping out of college, people that just, they didn't, you know, they didn't really know what they were doing, but they figured it out with, because of intention, because of, they were deliberate, because they had a mission. So, so yeah, like you were saying, like you didn't major in it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You grew up with it. You know, you kind of knew and you had a vision for yourself. That's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. So what would you say the secret to your success was going from that person who was doing it yourself to now the CEO and the one that's driving the vision? How did you, I would say, you know, that in itself is bossing up to the boss, you know, to being that person where you're, where you're saying, all these guys are, our girls are more talented than you. And like, what helped you get there? It's such a good question because I think it looks really different for everyone. I don't think there's like one thing. There's a lot of little things that add up, but one thing that's really coming to mind is, is being able to share the vision, which is going back to what we were saying. But what I mean by that is when I was growing the company and it was just me or we were in the early stages of hiring. And so I, my first hire I made because I was working and I could not do some tasks that needed to happen during work hours. Like I could work 6 PM to midnight every single day of the week. I could work every single weekend. And I did those things, but I could not like be on my phone for three hours during a work day. And so I was like, okay, I need to hire someone to fill that gap for me. But I did not make that hire with the um, lens of growing a company. It was really a solution to a pain point that I had. And I was still just like, it was me. I was the face. I was the service provider. It was me. And one of the shifts that started to happen was, okay, I can't be the only one that is client facing because I'm one person and I don't have enough hours in the day to do that. I need a team that can be client facing and that can support clients without me needing to be involved. But it's really scary to let other people represent a brand that literally feels like a baby to you. And you're just like, everything I have is in this company. And so being able to trust and like guide and lead the team in a way that allowed them to feel confident in their skills was a really big shift. But something that then happened after that point was we were maybe, you know, like a year into having a decent sized team. I want to say we had about three people on our team at this time. And I realized that just trusting them and having them be client facing wasn't enough. And that I really needed to have them bought into the vision for the company. And that was something that I hadn't really shared with them. You know, what are our revenue goals this year? How many hires do we want to make? How many clients do we want to sign? What new services do we want to add? These are all facets of the company that I was hundred percent leading. And I lead still to this day, but we have a lot more transparency about them now. And the first time that I shared those, that vision with the team, it was like a light bulb moment. I think not only for them, but for me to mm -hmm. see them so excited about it. And just last month we had our, so our team is fully remote around around the America. And last month we had our very first in-person team retreat. I flew everyone out to Colorado. We got an Airbnb for four days and we just like really bonded and collaborated and did all of the things. And at that meeting or at that retreat, we had a portion where I was leading a conversation around our sales goals for 2024. And there was an element to it that I was assigning to them that I was really nervous to give to them. I was like, I feel like I'm going to get pushback on this. I feel like it's a lot to give them on top of their role they're already doing. And the level of excitement that our team had over this thing that I was nervous about giving to them blew me away. And it was like absolutely one of my favorite moments ever because the amount of positive feedback I got from them around like just so, so excited to do this was really mind blowing to me. And I think it's just a great reminder that 
people are a lot more capable than we give them credit for, especially when we're building a brand or we're looking to outsource things that we've held really close to our hearts and felt like, well, I'm the only one that can do this. (laughs) You're never the only one who can do anything. And when you can trust other people and like really bring them into the fold and allow them to see what is going on bigger than themselves. It's so magical because everyone wants to be something bigger than themselves. That is amazing. But I do think um, what you said earlier about, um, you know, being transparent about that. I think people really appreciate that. And they feel like they're part of, like you said, they feel like they're part of something bigger. They don't just want to come to work. You think they do, but they, they actually, you know, want more. Yeah. And yeah. And this is so important. Like they know the value, they know the purpose. Like you were saying, start with why, like that is, that is, that's the real deal. I mean, you know, just a, a lot of people, I mean, there are some people that just want to go to work, punch a clock, whatever, but that gets, it gets old and tired and like boring, you know? So yeah, I think there's this narrative now that, you know, your work doesn't have to be, or, you know, your work doesn't have to be your passion. What you do for a living does not need to be your passion. But I do think that there's real value in having some passion for the work that you do and not dreading going to work every day. And when I build my team, I'm really looking for people who, who enjoy what they do because you're going to produce better work when you enjoy what you do. And that's how I believe you build a really powerful team is that you bring people in who are excited, maybe, you know, do other things, have other hobbies, have other things going on in your life. But when you come to work, you know, you want to sit down and say, all right, let's, let's get to it today. Yeah. I think, um, even if it's your passion is around the people that you work with, maybe it's not exactly what you're doing, but it's the P you know, there's something in the air. There's something there that's drawing you in on the daily. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, so I want to talk about a couple of things with you with respect to your business, a couple more things with respect to your business, because it's so interesting to me how you just created a successful entity. And I mean, obviously, digital marketing is in demand, but it's not that simple. Okay, it looks like, okay, I'm going to go out there, I'm hanging a shingle, I'm doing, um, I'm going to, you know, hire, I'm going to get clients, but it's not that simple. And people make it look that way. But it's not, and I I, I know that because I've, I've seen it. I've seen students and I've seen other, um, you know, side hustlers try to figure it out. So I'm curious, how do you guys know? I mean, you, you, one of the things about being successful is having uh, a recurring stream of clients and people that are coming back and or referring other clients. How do you know when a client is a good fit for you guys? Do you, Is there like a formula? Is there a profile that you look at? Well, I do all of our sales calls. Um, so I'm always involved in the sales conversation with that person. There are a few things that I look for. Um, you know, one element that a lot of brands don't realize they need to have a box checked for before you can work with an agency or anyone on the, the marketing side is you have to have content. And some people think that like, oh yeah, like, you can just create all the content. Like it's fine. But like, if you don't have imagery and you don't have video, it's not going to be successful. And so if someone comes to me and they're just like, yeah, like, you know, we're, we're just kicking off. We haven't made any sales yet. I've never had a photo shoot. Like it's not really a great fit for us because what we are really great at is putting fuel on the fire and elevating something that's, you know, you, you laid the foundation and we're able to come in and say, boom, let's like light it up and go from there. Um, but with that being said this year, we've actually added content shoots to our packages because everyone needs content shoots on a quarterly basis, if not more. And so now we like wrap that in, which has been really awesome. Um, but really there are, I mean, there's a few other things, but like, you know, personality fits are really important for us too. If someone is just like, um, direct in a way that is actually more on the mean side rather than just direct. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we've definitely experienced that. There's a lot of challenges though. You know, I think anyone in business has experienced, like you don't really know, you can't know a ton going into a relationship. Um, but we've definitely like 
here and there cut relationships short if it's just not the right fit after we've signed. Sometimes, you know, we get into the back end of someone's brand and their accounts and we're like, this is not what we were told it was either. So, you know, people can tell you things all day long and it may not even be the truth. We've absolutely had that happen many times, but I mean, at the end of the day, for for me, getting on sales calls is a really great way to learn more. And that's always the intention going into a sales call is to learn about the person on the other side of the screen and to see if what they're looking for is what we can deliver on because we want to make sure it feels good on both ends. Okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. Well, is there any um, client that you can think of that is like the most interesting and challenging client? Like that comes to your mind or are they all kind of in their own way? They're all kind of have, have their idiosyncrasies. Yeah. I think everyone really has like their own challenges and also like fun parts to them. It's really fun for us when we have like every platform under our umbrella. So we offer services on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, email marketing, podcasting. And so we have one client that does everything with us except for podcast. And it's really, really great because we're able to look at each platform on its own, but then also on a big picture scale as well. Like where can we cross pollinate and what messaging is going to work here and not here. Um, so it's really nice when we get to have our hands in, in every bucket, because typically we come in and we're basically that brand's marketing department. Mm -hmm. And so when we get to act like that and really kind of call the shots in all of the platforms, it just makes our work the more most fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, and what we talk about, I, I, I talk a lot about with the students is like, yeah, the social is one part of the marketing. There's other parts too. Don't forget, right? It's just one part. It's a very important part, but it is, you know, only one slice. Yeah. So sure. absolutely being able to deliver on that though is is key because then it can sync it with the other stuff, like you were saying. For sure. Podcasts. Now you talked about podcasts, which is what I wanted to talk about. Your stop scrolling, start scaling podcast. Let's talk about the origins. And that, and I didn't realize that podcasting was one of your services. So that makes total sense, right? Of course it makes total sense because you're Emma the queen. So <laughs> yeah, let's hear about the podcast. I love the name. And it's just, it's such a great, like I said earlier, it's engaging. Like it's exactly what you do. Yeah. Our podcast is stop scrolling, start scaling. And I started the podcast. Oh my gosh. I think it was in 2022. Uh, 2021, I think. Um, and it had been something that I had been thinking about for a while. And my team had come to me and said, why are, have you not thought about doing this? Like you would be so great to do a podcast, you know, educational content comes really easily to me. Like I enjoy talking the whole thing. And I, wanted to be really intentional about it and make sure we were going about it the right way. I definitely didn't know what I didn't know. And I tried to be as strategic as I could and still had a lot of flops in the way in the process. Um, but the podcasting was really, it felt really aligned for me because like I had said, I don't have a degree in marketing and I didn't have formal training in marketing, but the, the training that I did have actually came from listening to podcasts. So when I was working in design in the very beginning, I was commuting from New York City to Westchester, where my family's home was. And that is, it was about two hours door to door and every day, like each way. So I had four hours of commuting time for about a year and a half well, that I, I, I looked around on the train because it was like drive to the train station, train, subway, walk. So it was like every form of transportation. And I'm, I'm a productive focused person. I'm like, okay, I cannot just like spend four hours a day doing nothing. Looking around on the train, people are, you know, watching Netflix or sleeping or listening to music. And I'm like, that's just not for me. Like I need to do something with this time. So I got really intentional with those four hours every single day. And I would binge podcasts for hours and hours. And that added up like that educational time really added up and it set me 
up to be successful because I was listening to experts at the time, which like so much has changed since, since then, but listening to people who really knew what they were talking about, about building a business, about marketing, about building teams, about leadership. It was like all of these things that really set the stage for where I was going to go. And I didn't even really know it, but because podcasting were so influential in my early stages, I felt like it would be really cool to create my own and be able to be that person for someone else. Um, and so that was kind of the intention going into the podcast was to keep it pretty educational, to keep it really marketing and business focused, um, and provide a lot of value for our listeners so that they had a resource to go to and maybe even DIY their own marketing a little bit in the beginning, but then also know, you know, we're a trusted resource at the end of the day, and we can also support them as their company grows too. So that was kind of the mission behind the podcast. That is awesome. And that is so relevant today in terms of who's listening to the podcast, right? Would you say that it's a good source of lead gen for you? Are you getting people that are coming to you that actually hear it and then, you know, become clients? Yeah, we have signed people who have come to me and said, I found your podcast. Normally people find our podcast through interviews that I do on other podcasts. So okay. um, in 2023, we got really intentional about pitching to other podcasts to be guests. Um, and I ended up being a guest on 37 podcasts in 2023. And that between between those guest interviews and then having our own podcast and then our own lead gen, like it really added up and it brought a lot of new eyes into the business, which was really great. And so podcasting is absolutely a tool for lead generation. Um, one of the best things too is, you know, people get really intimidated or not intimidated, but like caught up in monetizing a podcast. And when you start a show, you might think like, oh, okay, like how long do I have to wait to monetize this? But a lot of people don't realize how you can monetize a podcast. And it's not just having sponsors and running other people's ads in your show. We, to this day, like we don't run ads for anyone else. We run ads for ourselves. Like I record ads to about our own services and about the way that ways that we can support brands. So that's a whole other avenue of monetization that people don't always consider. Um, but it's a really great way to increase brand exposure, to provide value and to ultimately bring people into the fold of what you do and how you serve. I get so many people asking me all the time, you know, cause I've had two podcasts. How do you start? What, you know, what, how, how do you think about it? And so I wanted to just hear your take because you obviously have created a successful entity in your podcast. Yeah. So if someone were to come to you and say that to you, how do I start a podcast? I mean, I, I realize we could, we could talk for an hour about it, but just like, you know, a quick snippet, like what's the first thing you should think about? The first thing you should think about is which audience do you want to serve? Because that audience is going to determine everything else. And maybe you don't have full clarity on who that person is, but you also know um, maybe just something, what, what is the problem that you're looking to solve, right? Like that's at the core of every business is you have a solution because there's a problem and you have a solution and you're being able to bring that to life. And it's the same thing with a podcast. So for us, for our audience, our audience struggles with seeing an ROI from their social media marketing. So everything that we do is revolved around solving that problem. Um, and so for someone who's wanting to start a podcast, what is the problem you're looking to solve? Who are you talking to? And in what format do you want to bring that to life? You know, some people are still not doing videos with their podcasts, which I could not recommend less to do. I think video is extremely important and it's going to become even more important when it comes to podcasting over the next 12 months. Spotify already released video podcasting in Spotify, which means that Apple is going to do it next. And your audience is looking for long form video when they're listening in. Like you're always going to have some people do audio only and some people do video. But if you're not providing the option for one or the other, you're missing out. And you're also not going to have marketing materials. So another element to think is how are you going to grow the show? How are you going to get listeners for your show? Are you going to market it to an audience that you've already built? Are you looking to build a new audience? How can you get in front of other people's audiences? Can you do guest interviews? Can you do guest swap interviews? Like 
all of these things, you know, who are we talking to? What are we saying? How are we filming it? And then how are we getting it out to the people are really the starting points I would recommend. She could be a, a, a business professor right now for someone who's saying she did not have formal marketing training. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> because for real, you've done it, right? The proof, you have proof of concept in your business. But the thing is, I have an MBA in marketing. It was so long ago. We're not going to talk about when. <laughs> so long ago, I need to get a new one, you know, because back then there was no, believe it or not, there was no digital. Yeah. So yeah, it's evolving. It's staying relevant. Like you're saying, it's staying on top. Like, I love it. I love how you said, I'm going to be intentional. We, last year, we were intentional about getting in front of other people. This year, we're intentional about our revenue goals. That is so important, the being intentional, the vision. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, that is excellent. Okay, so a few things, a few more things, and then we have to wrap this baby up, let you get back to your clients. But what advice do you have for our audience that wants to start a side hustle like this or something similar? What, you know, you gave us your journey of success, but would you recommend the same kind of things or what, what can they think about? You have a great way of kind of, but wrangling that. Well, you know, a lot has changed since I was side hustling, but you know, even more people do it now. If I were to start over and do it now, I would do some things differently. And I would say anyone who's wanting to start now, there's a few avenues to go. So number one, I would definitely decide, you know, what is it that you're going to do and who are you speaking to? Basically the exact same thing as starting a podcast, you're starting a new business, right? I would look at it as a business too. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make is they look at it as like this fun hobby, but it's a business. Like if you are bringing in revenue, which is obviously the goal here, you need to approach it as a business and do things that help you. You know, there's, we won't get into taxes and all of that, but like be aware of taxes, know how to save for them and know how to also have expenses that can help offset them at the same time. That's like a huge mistake so many people make. But number two, I would also say, begin building your personal brand. I would actually, I would say that's number one, you know, right now we're in a world where people are craving human interaction more than ever. And when you are the face of the brand, it adds a human touch to what you do. You know, 95 media is much bigger than just me, but I am still the face of the brand. I am the first touch point that a client has with us. Um, and am very involved along the way. So figure out what that personal brand looks like and begin building your online presence. I don't care what it is that you're doing. You could be a shoe cleaner, have an online presence because people are utilizing social media as search engines and they are going to go to Instagram. They are going to go to TikTok and look you up or look up keywords related to you or look up your location. You know, maybe they're looking for a let's go with a shoe cleaner. I don't know why I said that. It's so random, but like maybe you're looking for a shoe cleaner in New York city, right? Like you want that keyword search to pop you up, but you're never going to pop up unless you have a presence. And that should be part of your building process of your business. So if you're thinking about starting a side hustle, start with building your online presence, understand who you're marketing to and really approach it as a business. Don't look at it as just like this fun hobby. It can be a fun hobby right now, but look at it as a business. I can't wait for you to come and speak to my classes. Me too. <laughs> are going to dig it. <laughs> All right. So so what's next for Emma? What's next for the bit for the Emma Tesla, the queen? Are you building your business? Do you have other things in mind? Are there big secrets that we can't know about? There's no big secrets. It's all out in the world. I, I always think about this sometimes. I'm like, I literally say everything on the internet. Like there's nothing that I don't talk about. Like if someone was actually looking me up, like you could find everything. But right now I'm really focused on continuing to build 95 media. We are in a really exciting year. I just feel like this is going to be a really big year of expansion for us and being able to serve more brands. Um, the past few years, have, few years have been really interesting with this huge rise in new businesses during 2020. And then in 2023, we saw a big drop off of a lot of those businesses that were started in 2020, where people maybe realized 
that wasn't for them. And so this year feels like a really big year of kind of like evening out the playing field um, and being able to serve some really incredible new clients. We launched some new services this year, and I'm just really excited about continuing to grow our team and facilitate more relationship building and like um, just growth within the company and also allowing that to spill over into just serving our clients even better. So that's really where a lot of my focus is this year. No, oh, that's a great way to put where a great place to put your focus. I think it's exciting to watch the new um services to see how that does. Yeah, me too. Like creative yeah. and it's like, ooh, how's that one doing? Yeah, that's really fun. It's fun that you have a, a base that you can, you know, you can do that because it's all about testing and innovation and, and, and newness. I mean, you you have to keep that in your business, right? So definitely. And those new services really were born out of requests from other people. Like I'm always building things that serve a need that I'm already seeing. And I wait it out. I'm like, okay, well, just because one person asked for this doesn't mean that we don't need to do it. But you know, like when you see that pattern, I always say to my team, like, I don't care about one-off things. I care about trends. I care about long-term patterns, just data driven. And so when we see that as, as what's happening, it's really exciting to be able to release something new and serve a new audience. So yeah, oh, we're really excited to see how that it is from your client's perspective too. Like, Oh, like she's, you know, they're listening and that's a yeah. good relationship. And it's all about the customer. Exactly. So, yeah. Woo! Okay. Well, it has been amazing having you and thank you for taking your time from your busy schedule. And we have to ask Emma's advice, every we ask all of our guests, what is Emma's advice to boss up? To boss up, I think bossing up really comes back to self-confidence. And there's this quote that like you build self-confidence by following through on the promises that you make to yourself. And I love that because I think a lot of us you know, we say we're going to do something, but we don't have anyone holding us accountable to it. And so, you know, maybe it's like, I'm going to work out today, or I'm going to eat healthy, or I'm going to send five cold pitch emails to ideal clients. And then no one's checking in on you about that. And so you just don't do it. And you're like, well, no one knows. I'll just do it tomorrow. (laughs) You know? And so for me, like setting, I mean, I, I hand write my to-do list every single day. Everything else is digital in my life, except my to-do list. It's so odd. But, you know, making sure like everything is crossed out at the end of the day and especially those things outside of work too, you know, being able to, I personally neglected like my personal life for many years because my entire world was focused on growing 95 media. And I've only recently started like, well, who am I outside of this business? Like what hobbies do I have and what relationships do I have? And it's been really interesting to like come back to that. Um, so to boss up, I think, you know, being able to follow through on the promises that you're making yourself, do things that better yourself and just trust that you are the person who can lead the way and everything is always going to work out. I love that you said the accountability partner thing. I just bonded with a a girlfriend of mine uh, virtually because we're friends forever, but we don't live in the same place about the workouts. Yeah. We created like this little Google sheet. We're like checking in on the workouts every day. And it's like, yeah, accountability because you're so right, Emma. You could see <laughs> yeah, no one's looking. No one's looking. I could just do that tomorrow. Yeah, that's really yeah. fun. That's that's excellent. Okay. So I know also we have a, a little free gift that we're giving away to our audience and they, they're on the edge of their seats waiting to hear what it is. Yes. So we have a free course. It's called Master Your Marketing. Um, it is a jam-packed online course all about how to approach your marketing in a really strategic way, specifically your social media marketing. Um, it covers different content pillars, how to approach creating content, you know, strategies for getting content out there, how to engage with your audience and build community, things that not a lot of people are talking about. And it's a really great resource. It's all videos and I'm literally teaching, uh, in the course and it's just a great resource. Um, but you can join it. It's entirely free. It's on our website, 95 media.co, um, right on the homepage, you can find it. And it's really just a great place to be and to just pull some nuggets out of, because sometimes it's just one little thing that you're missing that can put you over the hurdle to start seeing some really good ROI. And that's our mission behind this course. 
I mean, how amazing is that? A free course. I'm, I'm, I'm signing up. I mean, I teach social media, but hey, you can never learn enough. You can always learn more. There's everything all the time. And to get a different perspective of professionals like Emma and her team, what? we're free. Okay. So how do they, they just go to 95media.co on the website and they'll see it there. Yep. Right? It's right there on the homepage. It'll be a pop-up actually on the page. Okay. So will they, will they, will they be able to, will you be able to get their email that way? So they, yep. can, they can it'll connect. collect your name and your email and then you'll be sent the login to access it. Beautiful. And if you guys want to connect with Emma, you can also connect with her on LinkedIn, Emma Tesler, two S's. Yep. We also have a 95 media business page there. We have 95 media pages on every platform. I'm definitely the most active on Instagram. So our handle on Instagram is 90.5.media. Um, but we post everywhere that you're on. So you can find us in all the places. Of course. And we would expect nothing less, would we guys? Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, it has been such a pleasure. I am so glad that we connected on, we connected on a really cool network on Slack called Old yeah. Girls Club. Amazing. It's an amazing network of unbelievable women like Emma. Oh my God. Thank you so much for coming by the show and for sharing all of your gems. Thank and you so much for having me. Out. Oh my God. Thank you. And, I, and I'm going to, and I'm going to meet, want to be on your podcast. Yes, for sure. Let's do it. If there's room, <laughs> talk. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you keep you continue to watch the summit. We still have amazing speakers coming up every day this week, and we are loving you. So please do take advantage of all these amazing gifts and connecting with people like Queen Emma. Thanks a lot, and boss up. <laughs>